Support Wrestle Talk. Give us a subscribe. Thanks for your support on Patreon. Wrestle Talk's personal ring announcer, Rodrigo Benitez. Hello and welcome to the Wrestle Talk su su Super R R Review News. I'm Ollie Davis, and we've got NXT and AEW Dynamite reviews coming right up. Click the timestamps in the video description below to go there. And the crab crab dance. Crab 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 crab. Right now! But first, let's all pay tribute to the suicidal, homicidal, genocidal, but most importantly today, officially one year older, Asidal Sabu. Happy birthday, you mad genius. May you go through your own flaming birthday cake. Going by their current AEW dark commentary strategy, perhaps we'll see him on the announcer's desk soon. And then probably also going through that desk. Again set on fire. Laboured segue for what happened behind the scenes at Dynamite last night. Vicky Guerrero was one of the top heels in WWE in the late noughties, being the general manager of both Raw and SmackDown, and in manager and kayfabe sexy time relationships with both Edge and Dolph Ziggler. She left weekly TV after losing a pudding match against Stephanie McMahon, a thing that actually happened, women's evolution, and planned to transition into a career in medical administration. Vicky has made cameo appearances in the years since for WWE, being in the surprise number 16 entrant in the first ever Women's Royal Rumble match in January 2018, and featuring on last October's 1000th episode of SmackDown. It seemed as though Vicky had some kind of legends deal with the promotion, turning up for big anniversary shows. But that might no longer be the case after last night's AEW Dynamite. Radio host Steve Myrick revealed that Guerrero was backstage at the show, tweeting, So glad to run into Vicky Guerrero backstage at AEW Dynamite in Garland. Excuse Excuse me! And it appears she wasn't just dropping in to see industry friends backstage, as just like Taz two months ago, she was there to do commentary for AEW Dark, as Dave Meltzer confirmed. Vicky Guerrero got a monster reaction coming out for commentary for the AEW opener in Dallas. She's doing the Dark show. Using retired WWE stars in the guest commentary position on AEW Dark is a smart strategy to encourage existing and new viewers to check out the show broadcast on YouTube. YouTube every Tuesday. While Taz reportedly went down very well in his guest spot in October, it appears to have only been a one-off. Hinting the same will be the case with Guerrero. It'll be interesting to see how that affects her being used in cameo spots on WWE programming going forward though. John Moxley, Bash at the Beach, The List of Jericho. Sorry, it's Lexicon, totally different. Vicky Guerrero is just the latest example of AEW pinching something from WWE. So when the going gets tough, bring in copyright lawyers. In a move I'm sure is totally unconnected to Cody reportedly swooping in and trademarking the expired copyrights for old WCW names like Bash at the Beach, Battle Bowl and Bunkhouse Stampede back in March. Presumably working his way through the alphabet there, starting with the letter B, which WWE appear to have taken legal action against since. PW Insider is reported Vince McMahon's company has gone on a trademarking binge for a slew of old WCW and ECW pay-per-view names like Fully Loaded, Anarchy Rules, World War 3, Tritown Rumble, that was a thing? Sold Out, Spring Stampede, Uncensored, and Hog Wild. I'm pretty sure nobody would have touched that last one. Unfortunately, they didn't more aggressively trademark their own names. As AEW announced on last night's episode, their next pay-per-view will take place on Saturday the 12th. 29th of February in Chicago, which is a leap year day, so I could propose to CM Punk. And it'll be called Revolution, which is pretty similar to the early NXT TakeOver name in 2014. Ah, Evolution. Revolution, if you take out the gap. Speaking of NXT, here's Chopper Pete with what went down on last night's episode in about four minutes. Thanks, Ollie. We got number one contenders, a new champion, and some mouth-watering matches set up for next week on this episode of NXT, so let's dive into it like we're Angel Garza on drugs. The show kicked off with the aforementioned Angel Garza taking on Leo Rush for the NXT Cruiserweight Championship. In what has become a staple of NXT, any matches surrounding the Cruiserweight Championship have to apparently be bloody incredible. And this match was no exception, with some insane high-flying and back-and-forth action culminating with the pair stealing each other's moves, Rush attempting to drag Garza back in the ring but only tearing his pants off. Rush kicking out of the wing clipper, only for Garza to lock in a double underhook submission for the tap out victory to become the new NXT Cruiserweight Champion. 
That was a long sentence, but it pretty much encapsulates how the match felt. It was non-stop. After the match, during an ad break, Gaza proposed to his girlfriend as well, which was lovely. What a night for Gaza. After some video packages for Shayna Baszler and Finn Balor, we get Cameron Grimes versus Raul Mendoza, which only goes a couple of minutes before Mendoza gets the win, courtesy of a Kushida distraction. Kushida also steals Grimes' hat. After a brief interview with Mia Yim, it's time for Jackson Riker versus Travis Banks in a preview of Worlds Collide taking place in January, with Banks actually coming away with the shock victory here, but with Riker kicking out on three like Hogan against the Warrior. Gotta keep him strong? Up next was Mia Yim versus Dakota Kai in a grudge match after Kai cost Yim her spot in War Games. This was a pretty fast-paced match, but it didn't quite have the intensity you'd expect with the character motivations going into it. Kai managed to pick up the win after using the exposed turnbuckle on Yim after distracting the referee, the dastardly heel. But Yim wasn't satisfied with that, beating down Kai after the bell and delivering a side suplex from a stage through a table onto the concrete. That looked brutal for both of them. Bask in his glorious video package before it's time for Breezango versus the Singh Brothers. This was, in fact, a match in which Breezango picked up the win. It was fine. Apart from that powerbomb on the apron to Samir Singh, that did not look fine. Yet another video package, this time for Rhea Ripley, before we head into Caden Carter versus Bianca Belair in a literally all the hair match. This was a story of speed versus strength, with Belair repeatedly cutting off Carter's fiery comebacks, eventually hitting a spear and the KOD for the win. A Champa video package leads us into the main event, with Adam Cole watching from the stands as Keith Lee faced Tommaso Champa and Finn Balor in a triple threat for the number one contendership to the NXT Championship. This was, unsurprisingly, an incredible match, with some frankly absurd high spots, including Keith Lee being just the best person ever. The finish came when it looked like Lee had the win, spirit bombing Champa before Bala hit a coup de grace on him for the win, the second time Lee has been taken advantage of after a spirit bomb in a triple threat. I hope that's reference going forward. Maybe that's his incredibly specific new gimmick. Regardless, Bala got the win and set up Bala versus Cole next week. That, plus Ripley versus Baszler, some might call next week stacked. Let us know what you thought of the show by pressing the I above my head where you can choose from an EST NXT, undisputedly good, the finest, two out of five live, and Cameron Grimes' wait no, Kushida's hat. I thought this was another incredibly solid episode of NXT with two awesome matches to bookend the show. It dragged a little bit in the middle, but none of the matches were bad by any means, and it set up some great stuff for next week. This NXT gets an undisputedly good. And now over to Luke for the AEW Dynamite review. Thanks King Chopper Whopper, but now it's time to get elite as I review the 11th of December 2019 edition of AEW Dynamite. The show kicked off with Jon Moxley quickly dispatching of Alex Reynolds in what is now the quickest match in AEW history, and afterwards Chris Jericho and his inner circle came out to offer Moxley a spot in their group. The crowd were super into Mox throughout this segment and were massively against the idea of him joining inner circle. Jericho handed Mox a t-shirt and gave him the holidays to think it over, and this was a great opening to the show. We then got the in-ring debut of The Butcher, The Bunny, The Blade! Next, as they took on Cody Rhodes and QT Marshall. These four men brilliantly built to the Cody hot tag, which the crowd were ready to go bonkers for. And QT Marshall actually got to look really good while running wild. It is a shame that a dive spot by Cody was botched somewhat when The Butcher was out of position, but the baddies picked up the win when they hit Black Heart on Marshall. Darby Allen came down after the match to offer a handshake of friendship to Cody to help him battle Butcher, Blade, and Bunny. I liked this a lot. MJF cut a fantastic promo on Cody, accepting his challenge for a match, but there will be some stipulations. Uh, almost. There are a few uh, provisos, a, a couple of quid pro quos. However, he won't say what those stipulations are until the January 1st show in Jacksonville. MJF is a brilliant heel, generating genuine heel heat from the crowd. Alex Reynolds, the guy who Moxley beat earlier in the night, was shown in his hotel room where the information screen on the TV turned into a Joined the Dark Order promo, telling him that he doesn't have to keep on being a loser. And I love this new direction for Dark Order. Big Swole beat Emi Sakura in a decent match, and Pac had a promo backstage 
states that he wants a rubber match with Kenny Omega and will do anything to get it. Speaking of Omega, and he teamed with Hangman Page, who spent last week home alone with a bottle of whiskey, to take on Kip Sabian and Sean Spears. Tully Blanchard cut an inset promo saying that he was testing out new partners for Spears to create a new tag team, but was not at ringside for the match. There were some fun heel shenanigans during the match to allow Penelope Ford That is a beautiful name, Penelope to hit some moves on Omega. But as they were building to the Page hot tag, the lights went out and Tully was revealed at the top of the stage tied up by Joey Janela. Spears went up to free him and the two brawled to the back and this was not a DQ apparently. Instead, there was a different story going on with the finish, which saw Omega hit the Snapdragon and B-Trigger only for Page to blind tag himself in and hit the Buckshot for the win. The commentators really put over that Omega had done all the work and Kenny was perplexed by Page's tactics. I'm really intrigued by this story, particularly as they're teaming again next week to take on the Lucha Bros. Brandi Rhodes cut a promo on the women's division saying that her offer to Chris Statlander is still open and like I said last week, this would be a good gimmick if it wasn't exactly what the Dark Order were doing in the tag team division. Luchasaurus beat Sammy Guevara in a solid match. Most of it sadly took place in the commercial break. Jericho and Jake Hader provided commentary with Hager saying nothing throughout, presumably because he was angrily tweeting about a 16 year old who thinks climate change is bad. Jericho and Hager brawled with Jurassic Express after the match and Jungle Boy hit a Hurricane Rana pin on Jericho which Marco stunt counted the 3-4. This was a really fun post-match angle and I am stoked to see Jericho vs Jungle Boy next week. And in the main event, Young Bucks and Proud and Powerful had a wild and fun chaotic street fight with table breaks, ref bumps, trash cans, football helmets and multiple interference spots and saw the Bucks pick up the win with the Meltzer driver onto some chairs. They'll now face SCU for the Tag Team Championships next week. So that was this week's AEW Dynamite in about four minutes. Vote in the poll above my head to let me know what you thought of the show using these options on screen right now. This was a very solid episode of Dynamite with great in-ring action for the most part, some really intriguing storylines being teased and brilliant build for next week's final live show of 2019. This week's AEW Dynamite was AEW-some. Was Seth Rollins' heel turn changed? Click the video on screen right now to find out more. Thank you for watching and a special thank you to our Patreon pledge hammers, some of which you can see scrolling their way into my stomach. I've been Luke Owen and that was wrestling.